location from the dog pound, March, I mean May 21st. We're talking about the Gambler 500. What is the Gambler 500, you ask? It is a low buck navigational challenge using preferably cheap vehicles, but whatever you got, we're not going to get down on you if you paid a thousand dollars for something that you're coming out and gambling with. We're not going to get down on you if you come out in a fifty thousand dollar Jeep and want to run support. It's all about the camaraderie, the trail rides, the cleanups, the fun. Rules? There are no rules. Don't be a dick. That's the rule. Um, like I said, nobody's going to knock you if you show up out there in your, in your, in your regular four-wheel drive and want to ride with us. We don't care. It's not about that. Prizes? I had one lady ask me on Craigslist or somewhere, or Facebook, I guess. says, uh... So, the, whoever the winner is gets the plink slips for all the vehicles? No. It doesn't work like that. If any prizes or anything like that even are thought of or given, it's among the gambler group to an outstanding uh, representative. Somebody that comes out really sends it, brings something uh, really honest. Um, you know, we we give when we did the uh, winter shit show last year, we had a couple guys come out and sent it with the PT Cruiser that was skid plated up. But to look at it, you think they just took a wrong turn on the highway. And you know what? Them two old boys were, they were great. Not only did they bring something cool, something different, but they ran the course, I think, pretty much ahead of everybody, too, running the navigation. Never grumbled about cut tires, never grumbled about, has come out and had a great time. So, prizes? No, don't expect a dang thing. What you get when you gamble is bragging rights and a sense of accomplishment in doing more with less especially if you're doing running an OG rig or if you're running a something like what I'm about to build and I've already ouch named uh, sorry named uh, junkyard it's a 72 Cadillac or a 73 Cadillac or what's left of it that's going to get a Mad Max kind of build with uh, parts that I got laying around. Probably going to be part part pickup, part car, part wrecker. Part cool. We'll see. Um, like I said, Griswold, it's great. I take it out and I get people hitting me with National Lampoon's quotes, you know. It was a good dog. He kept up for a while. <laughs> but, uh, <coughs> it's fun. You know, do you have to paint your car? Nope, you don't have to paint your car. Do you have to put a sticker on it? Nope. Do you have to let anybody tag it? No, you do not. What you do have to do is come out with a good attitude and a sense of adventure. Hopefully a toe strap, a little extra gas, a couple spare tires. And uh, wanting to meet folks and just enjoy the sense of community and fun that we uh, actually, actually have. And it is fun. Um, I met a guy down in Prescott Valley the other day. He's got a Nissan pickup. And it was funny, two hours after I showed him a sticker around the car, he'd hit up the site and had uh, made mention of me. And, uh, you know, is his, is his vehicle specifically a gambler? Not really. But is he down to go ride backwoods and have fun? Sounds like absolutely. Um, a couple of my friends that work at O'Reilly's here in Chino, they took a S10 that we ran in a winter shit show and had been kind of passing around a little bit. A couple different people who drove it when they needed a vehicle. Um, and basically cannibalized it. And I think they put a Toyota Torcel body on it. I'm not sure. It's looking cool. And uh, poor Miss Tracy was like, yeah, it was a lot of stress. But I think I sold them the, the, the pickup for $500 appropriately. Um, what they had into the torso body, I don't know. I think it was leftover parts from something, which is kind of how junkyard's going to be. 
uh, his motor came out of pick apart. I found it laying in the back of uh, uh, El Dorado and had to have it. It's 500. At least I think that's the one I'm going to use. I got a friend with the 472. I've got a couple spare turbo 400s, but the nice thing is um, they will bolt up to a Data 20 transfer case, allowing me to have way breezy day here in Chino Valley, allowing me to have low range, and also, more so than low range, since it's not going to be four-wheel drive and the transfer case is twin-stick, I could literally run a winch off the front uh, front drive shaft, run a PTO winch. The car is going to have a homemade pipe unit, pipe picker unit, T-bar for dragging things. Kind of an homage to the old school wreckers. Um, yeah, so a gambler is what you make of it. You know, I, I know people, I mean, Griswold is to a point my daily driver. I love driving that car. And that for a big old wagon, it drives good, it's fun to drive. And it's just, you know, my hands have been all over it. I brought the motor back to life that's in it. You know, if it blew up right now, I can't grumble. So it's all gambling. AGB, always be gambling. So, what else about the gambler? That's about it. There ain't no rules. Nobody gets to win your vehicle. Um, if you have a problem in the backwoods, we're not going to leave you. Unless you're being a dick. And even if you're being a dick, we don't believe in that shit. No man left behind. Um, you can't leave somebody stranded out in the desert. That just messed up. There was some. There was a group of guys called themselves the Ass Clowns that tried to put on an event out here and uh, left a lot of people hanging. Not cool. Not appreciated. They didn't pre-run any of the course. They didn't do shit. They basically looked at Google Earth and said, yeah, we can run that. Didn't work out real good. Right now, me, short bus Tony, um, hopefully Travis and Tracy. Um, I'm not sure who else we got around, but we're all kind of keeping in mind and putting together a, another Meet the Heat run for, I believe, mid to late July. I'm liking that idea. Um, biggest headaches that we got with it is actually getting longitude, latitude, check marks, waypoints, and all that down. But I've run some really good trail. Took Tony out one the other day that runs through Old Cherry. That was a nice ride. Um, we we got we got the ride here. It ain't a problem. And it'd be great if we could actually do a 500 miler. But I'm thinking if we get in the uh, into the solid 300 range, we'll be doing really really good. So we'll see. Um, how many? Okay, we're out there. We're just over eight minutes. Coming into the construction zone, you want to see what it used to look like, kind of. I'll leave it go for a minute more on Ramble. Um, they've been working on this pretty much since we moved out here. When I first moved to Chino Valley, all there was was a single lane road, you know, two lane. One north, one south. That's it. No turnouts, nothing like that. Um, they've managed to get it to uh, four lane all the way out to middle into Chino. Truthfully, it probably needs to be four-laned all the way to Ashford and I-40. Um, in case any of y'all ever come looking for me, there's enough hints in this video you should be able to find them without even trying real hard. All that out ahead, new housing that's popped up and been growing up, and they're steadily piling up more dirt. Going to do more. Going to do some more off to my left over here on the other side of the traffic circle. Um, I mean, they're. If I let this video run all the way into town where I'm going, I can show you a lot more. It's sad. We came here. It was quiet. Now the housing booms on. People are fleeing um, the lesser um, like states. That sounds good. Don't want to make anybody feel bad. I would hate to trigger somebody. But uh, so yeah, we're we're getting people in from all over. I mean, I can't say too much. I'm a Michigan-born boy and come out here, but the thing with me, unlike a lot of the people that we get in, me and Dory come out here, we love it, we don't want to change it, we like it, it, it is what it should be, it's Arizona, you know, um, but we got a lot of people here that move in that they'd like to change it into the shithole that they came from, not, I guess not understanding that, you know, you done ruined one place already, 
by policy and thought, and now you're going to come and, run and ruin another one. So, you know, something to think about. I thought we moved pretty well back out in the country, and shoot, now, I don't know. Still love it. Good place, good people. <laughs> Wind's blowing so hard, it blew the porta potty over. That's hilarious. I wonder if anybody was in it. But yeah, so we're going to shut this off. This is, uh, we're just about down to uh, 89A that crosses towards Prescott Valley. Prescott's out ahead of where I'm at right now. Out that way and two more to the left is Prescott Valley. It's a, it's a good little place. And uh, I think we're going to put on another good uh, summer run. And if nothing else, there's some bragging rights. When you get to take folks out on a trail ride like that, put on, help put on an event, there's a lot of enjoyment in it. If you're somewhere and you don't know about The Gambler, YouTube it, Facebook it, ask, look, check, and uh, start a group. Get, 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 get some guys and go gambling, man. When I first moved out here, I didn't know, buddy. I was running these back roads and Senator Highway in different places in a doggone Honda Civic, you know. Um, did a lot of riding in my two-wheel drive van. Uh, just got to use the little brains. Make sure you take the spare stuff you need. Jack, spare tire, toe strap, you know. Don't go out there, uh, don't go out there naked. And with that, I'm going to shut this down because I'm stopped and I can do it. A great day to everyone. AGB, thank you.